Welcome to the Power Is Now Radio. Your host and founder of the Power Is Now Incorporated, Eric Frazier. Hello, everybody. My name is Eric Frazier, and I'm the president and CEO of The Power Is Now. The Power Is Now is a media company as well as a mortgage and real estate company, and I'm the broker for both. My individual license number as the real estate broker is 011-43484. And my individual license number as the mortgage broker is 461807. We're absolutely committed to your success in buying a home. Thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule to listen to this information on how to get started and the process of buying a home. Now, you have received the flyer. You registered for this event. And I certainly hope you will encourage others to uh, buy a home as well. And if they're looking for information or support to reach out to us, go to thepowersnow.com and become a member of The Power Is Now. It's a movement of home ownership, for home ownership, that is. And all the information that you'll receive is free. Uh, the membership is free. And you'll get notifications when we are having special online events like now, our orientation, or our live first time home buyer webinars, which take place on Facebook and on Blog Talk Radio. If you go to thepowersnow.com, look under About Us, you can learn more about what we do, who we are, and more about me. Again, thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule today to talk about the process of buying a home. And if you receive the flyer, the outline is before you. We're going to talk about no money down and low down payment programs. I'm going to give you a high level overview of that. We'll talk about getting started with the loan application. And many of you may have already started or completed the loan application. And I'm going to go over a few things in regard to that. We'll talk about the documentation required for pre-approval and how long the pre-approval is good. And then we'll talk about FICO scores and debt ratios and other underwriting requirements for a loan pre-approval. And then what to expect after the pre-approval has been issued. What do we want you to do and understand? And then at the conclusion of that last point, uh, if you have any questions whatsoever, uh, please drop me an email, text me, or if you are able to, uh, write a question in the chat room in this webinar. There's a chat box for Q&A. So let's get started. No money down and low money down program. So the first thing I want you to understand is that no money down and low money down doesn't literally mean no money down and low down payment. There are some costs associated. They may not be called down payment. Uh, they, may, they may not be called closing costs, but they are costs associated with buying a home. And so the programs we offer and the programs you may have applied for today uh, does not require a down payment or may not require a down payment or may not require closing costs. But here's the money you need to have uh, as we move you through the process to buy a home. First, it starts with just the credit report fees. You know, those are in the 60, $60 for a credit report fee. And if we need to do a FICO rescore or any type of credit supplement work, there are additional fees associated with that. And our processor will let you know in advance what those fees are if we need to do some credit report work. Once your pre-approval is completed and your offer is accepted, uh, you'll have to do an inspection on the property. That's gonna cost you between $400 to $500 to have a licensed home inspector to inspect your property. And then of course, right away, once the offer is accepted, we wanna get the appraisal ordered. And typically we'll wait a few days, but most uh, borrowers and, and agents wanna get the appraisal ordered right away. That appraisal can cost between $500 to $7. We do not set the price. We use appraisal management companies they identify the appraiser and they set the price. And so that's five to $700 for the appraisal. That's about four to $500 for the home inspection. You're looking at $60 plus for the credit report, plus additional fees for the credit report if there's credit work that needs to be done. Now, this is what it costs. Now, this is not um, the end, all right? These fees uh, could uh, increase, for example, if an uh, inspection is needed on the property uh, after the appraisal has been done and there's work that needs to be done to the property. For that appraiser to go back out there, that's another $150. If the credit report expires, well, that's another $60. And the credit report's only good for about 60 days. And so 
No money down and low closing costs. Uh, yes, we do have no money down programs. And yes, we do have low or no closing cost programs. But the costs I've just identified are real folks. And I want you to note these things. Be prepared. Start saving your money. Start stacking cash. You need money for the inspection, four to five hundred dollars. You need money for the appraisal, five to seven hundred dollars. And there may be additional fees for the appraisal if there are issues with the property that need to be resolved. The seller is willing to resolve them. Well, if they were subject to uh, the completion of the appraisal, then that means the appraiser has to go back out there and make sure these things are done. And he's going to charge another $150. So these are some of the fees associated with um, buying a home, whether it's a no money down or low down payment. It doesn't matter uh, really what type of program it is. These are some of the fees associated with the program. Okay, so let's talk more about no money down. We have programs that are really incredible. Uh, one program called uh, Cal FHA is the California Housing Finance Agency. They will provide you the down payment and the closing costs. Three and a half percent for the down payment and FHA loan or three percent for a conventional loan and up to three to four percent for the closing costs. So that's literally no money down and no closing costs. But again, you still have to pay for some of these upfront fees. And by the way, it's important to recognize that after the inspection is completed, if it comes back with a bunch of issues with the property and you're not able to resolve uh, some type of settlement with the seller that he'll repair these things or reduce the price or something, then that money's at risk. If you're not able to work it out, you've just lost four to $500. Same thing with the appraisal. If the appraisal comes in low and the seller's not willing to drop the price, you're out $700. There are no refunds associated with the inspections or appraisal fees or credit report fees, no refunds. You are completely at risk. This is why it's so important that you're ready to go. You've got to be all in and serious and committed because you've got real money you're going to spend. And then on top of that, all the documentation is going to expire and the credit report is going to expire. And I'm going to get into that in more detail in just a few minutes. So the Cal FHA program is our program that provides the down payment and the closing costs. You need a minimum FICO score of 640. Your debt ratio can't be more than, than 45 back in. In fact, it could, they may require 43, depending. If you go conventional, then it could be 43. If you do um, government, we can go as high as 45. So it just depends. Uh, it's very important too that you recognize that you can't bring a co-signer in or a co-borrower in on this program. You gotta be able to stand on your own. And for this reason, the FICO score 640, the lower debt ratio, it's challenging for many first time home buyers to apply, but don't worry. We have other programs and I'm going to avoid giving names right now, but because there's so more, so many programs, uh, you know, I can't hardly keep track of it, to be honest with you. So the other programs, and they all do the same thing. They all have different names, but they all literally do the same thing. They will give you the down payment through an interest credit. So for example, if the normal rate is four and a half percent, on this program, you might be paying five and a half percent or five and a quarter because they're going to increase the rate in order to give you the down payment. So essentially you are borrowing your down payment through the interest rate, yet they're calling it a grant or maybe even a loan. It just depends. Lenders will do this if your income doesn't exceed between 115 to 140% of the maximum uh, or the area medium income, AMI. Now in cases where it does, They'll still give you the loan. They'll still give you the money, but as a loan, as opposed to a grant. So if you fall in 115 to 120% of the AMI, it could be a grant. That means you don't have to pay it back. If your income exceeds that, then you can still get the money, but it's going to be a loan, typically over a 10-year term, somewhere in an interest rate range of 5%. So again, we can provide you the details of this and we will through the pre-approval process. You're gonna know exactly what you're going to get and have to work with once we have a complete application and all your documentation. Now we have other programs for first responders that will give you a grant of 2% 
and the FICO score requirements are really, really low. So, but before I get to that, let me go back to this other program I was telling you about. So if your income, and let's call it uh, home secure, we'll call it home secure, all right? And all of the programs that fall into this category are the same. So basically they'll increase the interest rate, give you the down payment as a grant if your income doesn't exceed 115 to 120% of the area medium income. They will also allow your debt ratio to be as low as 620. A 620, not a debt ratio, but FICO score to be as low as 620. But a 620 FICO score, you can get the money for the down payment. They will also allow the seller to give you a credit up to 6% to cover your closing costs. So unlike the state of California program that will give you the uh, money for the down payment and the closing costs, uh, this program through the lender will, pro will provide you the money for the down payment, but not for the closing costs. You will have to negotiate with the seller to get a seller credit for the closing costs. So that's the limitation to this program. Now, the other thing too, is that if it's again, if, it's, uh, if your income doesn't exceed 115 to 120%, it's a grant. If it exceeds, it's a loan. And the payment is very low and it's affordable and it's enabled to get you in. Now, the, what, what the two programs I've just mentioned have similar is the fact that in the case of Calif HA, where they're gonna provide you the down payment and the closing costs, in both cases, those are loans, but they have no payment associated with them at all. You will have to pay it back when you sell the house or you do a refinance, but if you stay in the property for the life of the loan, you don't have to pay it back. And so it's designed to increase owner occupancy. It's for, it's for putting people into homes, not for investors. And so there are real consequences associated when you are going to move out and use it as a rental or you want to refinance or you want to sell it, then you, that money has to go back to the state. Whereas on this other program called Home Secure, um, the money is the grant. If your income level is right, and if it's not, if it's higher than the maximum, then it's a loan and that loan is paid off after a 10 year period. Now, some programs will forgive the loan after three years of making the payments on time. And so all these programs are different, but uh, there are some differences, some small differences, and that's a pretty big one right there. The fact that some of the programs will forgive that silent second or that loan completely after you have made your payments on the first mortgage on time for three years. So those are two uh, kind of high level overviews of the no money down programs. And that's at 620, where the, the last program I just mentioned is at 620. The first program minimum FICO score is, uh, is 640. Your debt ratio can't be more than 45. On the second program, well, we'll give you, uh, basically we'll increase the rate and give you the money for the down payment. Your FICO score can be as low as 620 and your debt ratio can be as high as 56.9, much higher debt ratio. Now there's one more program for individuals who don't have the credit score of 620. And this program is for first responders and the first responder uh, program will allow a FICO score as low as 580, 580 FICO score and they will give you 2% towards the 3.5% down payment. All right, so that's a really amazing program. And if you're a veteran, well, that's even better. You get a grant of 2%, even though you don't have a down payment at all. And so that money can be used towards your closing costs. Now, in addition to those down payment assistance programs, Calif HA, Home Secure, or the First Responder Program, we also have uh, zero down programs that don't necessarily have uh, income limits. For example, the VA is a zero down program. You just have to be a veteran. There are no income limits whatsoever. There are loan limits based on the area, but there are no income limits. There's even no purchase limit. And then we have USDA. With USDA, you don't have to be a veteran and this program doesn't require a down payment. Typically the VA is a zero down payment program. But this program, USDA, doesn't require down payment, zero down. You have to buy the property, though, in an area designated uh, as, by the Department of Agriculture as rural, a rural area. 
And there's a website to go to to put in the address to determine that. In addition to that, uh, your income, there are income limits on this program. So uh, you'll have to put in your income on the website and we do this for you and we can provide you the website. You can do it yourself and determine if your income exceeds the income limit. And then uh, there are uh, two programs by Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, one called Home Ready and Home Possible. Now, these programs will require 3% down. Now, typically, when you're putting less than 20% down, like with all the other programs I've just mentioned, there'll be some type of mortgage insurance involved. There's no mortgage insurance on these programs. 3% down and no mortgage insurance. Minimum FICO score, 620. Debt ratios can be as high as, I would say, 45 to 50. But you have to have the down payment and you can get a gift and the seller can contribute to the closing costs. And that's typically the case with all of the programs. So this is a high level overview of the no money down, no or low closing costs, seller credit, income limitations. There's a lot to it. And that's why you use a mortgage broker because we've got it all figured out, folks. We're going to take your information and we will determine what program best, best fits your situation. What program is going to work with your FICO score, your debt ratio? We're going to do the work. We're approved with many different lenders to help you move closer to becoming a first time home buyer. Okay, so that's the overview. Next up, we're going to be talking about getting started with the application. Hang in there, folks. We'll be right back right after this commercial break. I don't really remember the first time I dreamed about owning my own home. Do you? Take a second and think about your oldest memory, walking through a house and being able to call it your own. Your favorite music playing in the background. Your family and loved ones around you. And you're all celebrating. The American dream lives on. The power is now Buyers Club. Not having enough money is no longer an excuse. Saving up and waiting is no longer an option. We have access to lenders who are willing to give you a leg up when others are not. Though it may seem like it, not every lender is the same. The power is now and it's yours to buy. We'd like to be there for you. Find us at thepowersnow.com and own your home today. And we're back. For those of you who have joined us on our webinar, thank you so much for taking time and for choosing The Power Is Now to assist you in your journey to home ownership. Now, so far, we've done a high level overview about zero down and no money down and low money down programs. If you would like a more detailed presentation about this information, please go to thepowersnow.com and under the event page, you'll find a schedule of first time home buyer webinars, which I'll be conducting. They are on Tuesday afternoons from three to four, Tuesday afternoons from three to four. Every week I talk about a particular program in detail. And so if you're interested in learning more about the hundreds of different programs that are out there, uh, join us on Tuesdays from three to four, where we talk about um, first time home buyer programs that get you into homes with little to no money down. Okay, let's talk about the application process. Now you may have been sent to our website to download our mobile app. If you haven't, please do that today. Go to thepowersnow.com and at the bottom of the screen, you'll see us uh, share our, our mobile app or download our mobile app. Put in your telephone number, your cell phone number there, hit submit and you'll receive a link. Download the app. On that app, it's a mortgage calculator, as well as our online application, as well as the credit report application. You, you can take care of the entire process completely from your phone or tablet. Now, the website to complete the application is applytobuynow.com, www.applytobuynow.com. Or you can go to neverleaseagain.com, neverleaseagain.com. I like never lease again because that's going to happen. You're never going to lease again once you complete this process and buy a home. Now, you'll complete the application. It'll take you no more than 10 to 15 minutes to complete the application. And once you do, you'll receive a welcome letter from the Powers Now with a list of all the documents we're going to need. In addition to that, there'll be a secure link 
in that email where you can upload the documents directly into our system. Please do not email us any of your personal financial information. As you are fully aware, email is not that secure. Now, if you have a secure email platform at work or at home, definitely you can use it. Our recommendation is that you upload the information to our secure email or you fax the information into us to our secure fax. And the information is on our on the screen here for the secure fax. And uh, you can email it to, again, upload, it, upload the documents through the secure link. That link is your own unique link. So we can't make it obviously available in this presentation, but in your email, you'll receive a secure link just for you. The documents you upload will go directly into your file and you can see that we have received the documents. Another thing about sending information this way is that you can see the quality of the information you're sending. Can we read it? Is it clear? And those are sometimes problems when you're faxing information. And uh, sometimes when you scan information, you gotta make sure that you look at it, make sure the documents are clear uh, and you know easy to read, completely legible. Now, there's a whole list of things we're going to need from you. A copy of your bank, a copy of your driver's license and your social security card. Make sure you do a color copy if that's available and make sure it's light enough so we can see everything on it. Same thing with your social security card. Then we're going to need your pay stubs and for the last 30 days and we're going to see need your tax returns for the last two years. And in fact, if we're going to use a government program like the state of California program, we'll need your tax returns for the last three years. So please uh, remember to include your complete tax returns, the federal tax return only. We do not need the state of California tax return, just the federal tax return. Also, if you have made an arrangement for taxes you owe, please provide the installment agreement so we'll know what that is because that's not gonna stop you from buying a home. If you owe taxes the previous year and you're making payments, just provide us a copy of the um, installment agreement and let's make sure that we can verify you've been making the payments on time. You'll need to provide us cancel checks for the last three payments that you've made or be able to identify those uh, checks clearing your account with the last three months of banking statements. All right. In addition to the tax returns, uh, we'll need the bank statements for the last two months, bank statements for the last two months minimum, unless you're using bank statements to verify payment on certain things. For example, as I mentioned, taxes. So if you owe back taxes and you're making payments, then provide us the uh, either the council checks or provide us the complete statements. If you're going to use statements to show that you're making payments on something that may not be reported to the credit bureaus, it's important that you provide us the entire statement, not just the payment history, but the entire statement going back that period of time. So we're going to need uh, your bank statements for the last two months. Uh, and that bank statement is very important. We have to have all pages of the bank statement, even if it's nothing on the page, it's a bank a blank page. And we're going to be looking for things like NSFs. So if you've had non-sufficient funds, you're going to have to write an explanation about that activity. All right. And of course, uh, uh, any, uh, any large deposits, we're going to need to know the source of those deposits. And so we're looking to kind of see where the money's coming from. And this is because of the Patriot Act. Now, Looking where the money's coming from and your spending habits is important. Underwriting is going to look at that. Again, they're going to look at NSF, so hopefully you do not have any. If you do, we need an explanation. They're going to look for cash deposits. If you have large cash deposits, they're going to want to know the source of those funds. And of course, if you're putting money down and it's coming from a savings or a checking account, we're going to need to see that money's been there for the last two months. That's another reason why we may need two or three or even more months of statements to show the money that is seasoned funds. So the bank statement is very, very important. If you have any questions about the bank statement, don't hesitate to give me a call and I'll be happy to uh, ex you know, explain why we need what we need. Now, if you're pulling money from a 401k, then we're going to need the plan document that says you can do so. Same thing, if you're pulling money from an IRA, we're going to need the statement. Now, most 401ks and IRAs, our investment programs, provide statements on a quarterly basis. So we'll need a complete quarterly statement 
for the last uh, you know three months, if that's the case. If you get a monthly statement, that's even better. And if you're going to withdraw the money from a 401k, then you need to get started on that right away because it can take time. And again, the plan document for the 401k is very, very important. Typically, you can download that document from uh, the uh, plan administrator from your company website. All right, so we've talked about your driver's license, social security card, your pay stubs for the last 30 days, your tax returns for the last two or three years, and your bank statements for the last 60 days, all pages, and maybe even more if you're using bank statements to document payments over the last 12 months or to um, document uh, that your money's been seasoned at least two months, the money we're using for the down payment if a down payment is being required. Now, there may be some other things we'll need, depending on your circumstances. For example, if you're receiving alimony or child support, right, we'll need the award letters. If you're receiving retirement funds, we'll need the uh, uh, the award letters, is what I'm trying to say. Did I say reward? We need the award letter for both child support, alimony, or retirement. And by the way, if your job is commissioned uh, or you receive bonuses, we will not be able to use commission of bonus income unless you've been on the job for the last two years. And if you have, we'll need to be able to verify that income separately. So that means we may have to send a verification of employment so they can tell us exactly what you've made in overtime or bonus or commission income. And we can average that over a two year period and apply it to your income. If you work for a union and you're working many different jobs, we're gonna to have to do a verification with each employer. And so uh, we'll need a course in the most last 30 days of pay stubs, but depending how you work, union workers, electrical, construction, what have you, it can sometimes be challenging. Now, if you just work for one company with the union, then that's really easy. But if you're working for multiple companies and have been doing so, then that's gonna be a little bit more challenging. We'll need the W-2 statements and the addresses and telephone numbers of all these employers so we can verify your employment. So as you can see, the process of, of, of uh, processing a pre-approval can be involved. There's a lot of work involved, a lot of things we need to know. Now, another thing too, in the final part of the application, when you're putting in your, your home address, and by the way, the last two years is what we're gonna to need to see, your employment history for the last two years, uh, your banking information, all show us as much reserves as you possibly can. Uh, then your assets, anything you own, cars, vehicles, stocks. And then it's going to end with your declarations. And it's going to ask you questions like, have you been in default on a student loan debt? If you are in default on a student loan debt, has it been reinstated? Are you making payments? And if you have a student loan, we're going to need to know what the level payment is that student loan. If it's being reported to the credit bureaus, we may be able to use the actual payment that's being reported. If no payment is being reported, then we may require you to find out what the level payment is for 20, 25, 30 years, get the lowest payment you can, so that we can add that to your debt ratio. If you are not able to do that, then typically we will take 1% of whatever you owe, and that will be the payment we'll use to qualify you serious business dealing with student loans. And so if you're in default, we'll need to see that it's been reinstated. If you're not in default and you have student loan debt, we'll need to know what the fixed level payment is for most of the programs we have. Now, if you have a tax lien, then we'll need to see that the tax lien has payment arrangements. And again, we'll need this installment agreement. If you file a chapter seven bankruptcy, we'll need a copy of the discharge paperwork. And for most programs, a minimum of two years, government programs, a member of two years need to have passed by in order for you to qualify for any program. So two years on a chapter seven bankruptcy and we'll need the discharge document. If you file a chapter 13, uh, if you've been in the plan for at least one year and you've made your payments on time, no problem. Hopefully you have reestablished credit during this period of time. I highly recommend if you haven't, go out and get a secure credit card and start working on that building your rebuilding your credit. But a lot of people don't know that you can buy a home 
while in bankruptcy, chapter 13. You just need to benefit it for one year, made all your payments to the trustee on time, as well as other obligations that are not included in the bankruptcy. We'll need to see the chapter 13 plan, the complete debt bankruptcy plan, and we'll need to get the court approval from the trustee in order for you to obtain a home loan. Now, a child support and alimony, if you're paying child support, it obviously needs to be current. We'll need the divorce decree. If you're receiving child support, we need to see proof that you're getting it because we know that sometimes, you know, there are some dads out there not paying. So we'll need to see at least the last six months of cancel, not cancel checks, but some proof of the money coming into your account. Typically, a bank statement uh, for the last six months could serve as showing the money going in. A court order from the uh, district attorney is also a uh, great documentation, but a court order doesn't necessarily show that you're getting the money. We'll need some type of transaction history of the money coming in. In addition to the divorce decree, which indicates the alimony to be paid and uh, any other documentation associated with that. Okay, so that's the packaging. And once we get it all together, folks, um, then we process it, we put it together, we analyze, we uh, put your loan basically in a position where we can make a decision as to what program best meets your needs. This can take us between 24 to 72 hours. It just depends on how much you have going on, the level of complexity of your file, of your documentation. Now, uh, this documentation is absolutely essential for pre-approval. It's, it's just really one step prior to an actual real deal, right? I mean, uh, we're issuing a certificate saying that you are pre-approved for a certain amount of money, and you are going to make a deposit, an earnest money deposit, based on your ability to get that loan. So this is very serious. Take it very, very seriously. Uh, because the uh, pre-approval is literally money. We're saying you are approved for 300, 400, 500,000. And uh, once we analyze all your financial information, it's like taking a financial snapshot. You are on lockdown from that point. You cannot do anything. Cannot literally do anything. When I say you cannot do anything, I mean literally you cannot do anything at all until you have bought a house. Do not, do not buy a car. Do not take on a new credit card. You may be getting pre-approved offers. Do not accept them. Do not refinance a credit card. Do not do a balance transfer. Do not refinance a car. Do not take any loans whatsoever. Do not move any money from your account, from one account to another. Do not do anything. Just use your debit card for your normal living expenses. Do not increase your debt on your credit card. Do not do anything that could potentially change your FICO score because that could affect your loan approval. Do not take on new debt because that could affect your loan approval. And so these are uh, uh, things that have happened in the past with clients and they have basically ruined their opportunity to buy at least at that time, because uh, they weren't aware that these are things they couldn't do. This also underscores the importance of you, once we issue the pre-approval, that you are ready, ready to go. I mean, your goal should be to go out with your appraiser, or not your appraiser, but with your real estate professional, your agent, every single week and get something under contract. And here's why. The credit report that you paid about 60 something dollars for, about $62 for, that credit report is going to expire in 60 days. In 60 days, and we can't use it anymore. Not just us, but no one can use it. And so you'll need to pay another $60 for an updated credit report. In addition to that, your documentation, your bank statements, your pay stubs, they have to remain current throughout the pre-approval process. So that means they expire in 30 days. We cannot submit your loan to a lender for the final loan approval unless our documentation is less than 30 days old. So every 30 days, all of your documentation expires. Well, not all of it. What expires are your banking records, your bank statements, and your pay stubs. That's what expires. Okay, and then finally, the application, the pre-approval itself 
expires completely after 90 days. In 90 days, we have to start the process all over with a new application and re-underwrite your loan and issue a new pre-approval with a new date. So here's what that means. Number one, your pre-approval that we will issue after we have analyzed your income and documentation and we have identified the program and have set your limits as to what you can buy and the areas with down payment or without down payment assistance. Once we've done all of that, we're going to issue a certificate and that certificate is going to expire in 30 days. And the reason why it expires in 30 days is because one, we need to make sure you have not done anything to jeopardize your loan approval. And so we need to inspect what we expect. And that's why the pre-approval is only good for 30 days. Now to have us update that pre-approval for another 30 days, you have to submit to us your most recent pay stubs for the last 30 days, as well as the most recent banking statement. Upon receiving those, we issue you a new pre-approval with an updated date. And that pre-approval again is gonna expire in another 30 days. Now at the end of that 30 day period, that'll be 60 days that will have elapsed. And what we'll need from you again is updated pay stubs, updated bank statements, and we'll need to update your, FICO, your credit report. We'll need to update your credit report because your credit report will have expired. And so at the end of that next 30 days, which will be our 90 day period, we're gonna update the application. The credit report will still be good because we'll have another 30 days to go on that. We will need bank statements and, and pay stubs again, but we're gonna update your uh, pre-approval application with a current date because no listing agent is going to uh, accept a pre-approval that's 90 days old. They're gonna think, well, you know, maybe you've done something or it's not fresh and we don't want your offer uh, to not be accepted because someone else is making an equal offer, but they have a current pre-approval. So we don't want any of our pre-approvals out there uh, that are more than really 30 days old, more than 60 days old, to be honest with you, uh, so that our clients have the best chance possible of getting pre-approved. Okay, so that's what they expect uh, once the pre-approval has been issued. You are on lockdown for the entire period of time. This is why it's so important that you get out with your agent every single week, if sometimes, if twice a week you can, uh, that you really take the process very seriously. And here's another reason why, that you need to take the whole process very seriously. And that is, everything changes. The loan program is not guaranteed. If a lender decides to longer longer offering the program, you're out. The only way to lock in your program is to actually be under contract on a property and to get a, a lock a lock from the lender. The other thing too is that interest rates are going up. And so we may pre-approve you at say, you know, 5%, but the interest rates are rising and by the time you get under contract, the interest rates are 6%. Well, you may not be able to qualify for as much house on loan at 6%, and so now we have an issue. This is another reason why we have to review your pre-approval every 30 days to make sure that it reflects the current market interest rate and that you have not done anything to jeopardize the pre-approval. Well, folks, this is a lot of information and this is why this orientation is so important. If you have any questions whatsoever about anything I've said, please do not hesitate to schedule a time to talk to me. I'll be more than happy to go into more detail on the program we've identified for you, on your financial or credit situation. And of course, if you are in a situation where you need help to get your credit score up, we have the tools and the resources to work with you and to help you become a first time home buyer. Well, that concludes our first time home buyer orientation. We don't have any questions in the Q&A. I appreciate those of you who have taken the time to uh, watch this video and if you have any family members or friends who are interested in buying a home feel free to share it with them or invite them to join the next first time home buyer orientation these orientations are every wednesday from 3 to 4 p.m and again we invite you to be a part of it and we certainly hope that um, 
you enjoy the process, that you'll learn the, from the process of buying a home, and that you'll become an advocate for home ownership for everyone too. Now, please also tune in to our shows, uh, Block Talk Radio, iTunes. Please subscribe to us on iTunes and tune in and all the other online radio platforms. Go to thepowersnow.com, become a member of The Powers Now so you can receive our magazine and um, participate in our live events on uh, Facebook and other social media outlets. Well, remember, we are at our best and we maximize our success when we act now. That's The Powers Now mantra, and we really believe that. You are acting now to buy a home and you are fighting against time and change. And the only way to win that fight is to move quickly. Do not waste time. Get everything we need to us as fast as you possibly can. We will turn your peer approval around right away. Get out with your agent every single day if you have to. Find a property. And then most importantly, make offers. All right. Even if, if you rate that property on a scale of one to 10, it's a five or six, write an offer because your offer may not be accepted anyway. And ultimately, when you're going to make your decision, it's going to be based on who is willing to accept your offer. That's what you're ultimately going to have. And so try not to be too picky. Try to be realistic with what you can afford and also look at the bones and the structures and the essential needs, the number of bedrooms and baths you need, the yard, that kind of thing, because you'd be surprised what you can do after a couple of years in that house and make it what you want it to be. And if you're interested in maybe building a home as opposed to buying an existing home, you know, or buying a, something that's in really bad shape uh, that we can provide you the money to fix up, we can do that with our one-time close program and our FHA 203K program. So we've got a lot of programs to help you get into a home uh, just about any way you want to. Thank you again for spending time with me this afternoon. Have a wonderful day. Remember, the power is now. You've been listening to The Power Is Now Radio. For more information about the show, check us out at thepowerisnow.com or find us on Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter.